This is a brief overview of our paper, Visualizing the Fate of Neural Networks, to be presented at NeurIPS 2019. This paper is joint work by Scott Gigante, Adam Charles, Smitha Krishnaswamy, and Gal Mishna. When we think about visually inspecting a neural network, we can think about it in terms of three axes, the input data, the hidden units, and the network state over time. The first thing we do when visualizing a neural network is typically to visualize the loss curve. However, this gives only a global view without telling us anything about the behavior of the hidden layers. An alternative would be to visualize the hidden representations of the input data, which gives a static view of the network state, but does not tell us about learning. Other work has been done to visualize the loss landscape of a network, but again, this is a static picture of the network that does not tell us about the training process itself. In this paper, we present multi-slice fate, or m-fate, a visualization of network hidden state dynamics as a function of input data and time. Each point in the visualization re represents a single hidden unit at a single epoch, and as a result, we obtain a dynamic and global view of the network's learning process. First, I will briefly introduce FATE, a dimensionality reduction algorithm recently published in Nature Biotechnology. FATE is a kernel method. It converts distances to affinities using an adaptive bandwidth Gaussian kernel. These affinities are converted to transition probabilities and diffused to build a globally connected manifold. Next, these transition probabilities are converted into an informational distance that upweights long-range distances in order to enforce global structure. Finally, this informational distance matrix is embedded in low dimensions using MDS. Now to MFATE. When training a neural network, we observe a tensor of activations of each hidden unit by each training sample at each epoch. If you were to flatten this tensor into a matrix and visualize it naively, there's no discernibly useful structure. So instead, we use the natural tensor structure of the data to build what we call a multi-slice graph, a graph for each epoch connected by an inter-slice kernel function. The multi-slice graph is built as follows. We compute a standard affinity matrix on hidden units in a single epoch using a representative sample of training data as features. We then repeat this process for each epoch using the same features, and we stack these kernels down the diagonal of a multi-slice kernel matrix. At the moment, these form a disconnected subgraph for each epoch, so we connect them using affinities between each unit to itself at different time points. When we put it all together, we get a highly sparse connected affinity matrix where each row or column represents a hidden unit at a single epoch. Now, remember that visualization with no discernible structure? It's not just fate, the naive visualization simply doesn't work. However, when we use our multi-slice kernel, all of a sudden we see complex structure and temporal dynamics in M-fate visualization, while other methods still produce unintelligible plots. In our paper, we present M-fate in two vignettes. The first is a continual learning scenario, where we train a network to classify two digits of MNIST at a time. After each task, the network is expected to remember everything that it has seen previously, and we do this with three different training schemes, using the Adam and Adagrad optimizers, and using an experience replay method called Naive Rehearsal. When we visualize these networks with MFATE, we see that Adam, which performs worst, experiences a structural collapse after each task switch, while Naive Rehearsal, which performs best, appears to continuously build on the structure learned in the early tasks. This corresponds to a phenomenon known as catastrophic forgetting. In the paper, we quantify this visual effect by clustering on the visualizations and show that the retention of structure at the task switch is highly correlated with test performance. In the next vignette, we compare five classifiers with varying generalization performance, a standard network, a network with L1 penalties on the weights, a network with L1 penalties on the activations, a network with dropout applied after each layer, and finally, a network training on images with random class labels. We see here that the networks with the most complex visualizations, like the dropout and kernel L1 networks, also have the smallest gap between training and test loss. On the other hand, networks with the poorest generalization performance, such as activity L1 and the network with random labels, also have much simpler structure in their visualizations. In the paper, we quantify this effect by calculating the entropy of the visualization and show that high entropy is highly correlated with good generalization performance. To summarize, 
we have shown a new visualization method called mFate, which is designed to interpret the training process of neural networks. To see more detail on these vignettes, including other training schemes and datasets, you can read our paper on archive. mFate is also available on GitHub and works with TensorFlow and Keras. Thanks for listening.